Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. The NFL draft is just two days away. I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. If you are, go ahead, hit that thumbs up icon if you're ready for the NFL draft and to see what Joe Shane will do with the 10 picks that they have. In today's show, we are going through our final seven-round mock draft here on the channel. I will make all seven uh, all picks in the seven rounds. And the Giants have 10 of them. And this is what the picks will look like. In round one, they have pick 25. There's been a lot of rumors that they could go after a receiver. I could see that. And then you see round two. They got pick 57, then pick 89, then 128, then 160, then 172, 209, 240, 243, and 254. So the Giants, they have six picks in the final fifth, sixth, and seventh round. So that's going to be a lot of late picks for the Giants. But let's start at the top of the draft. I use the Pro Football Focus Mock Draft Simulator. And when the Giants were on the clock with pick number 25, these were the top prospects left on the board, in my opinion. All the top corners were gone. No, no Banks, no, uh, of the, no Gonzalez. None of the top corners were there. And then some of the top receivers were gone as well. Jackson Smith and Jigba was gone. Jordan Addison were gone. These are the top guys left. Kalijah Kansi, the D lineman from Pitt, who I'm a big fan of. Emmanuel Forbes, the outside corner from Mississippi State. Little light in the pants, only 166 pounds, but a damn good football player. Then they got Zay Flowers, the wide receiver from Boston College. And then Quentin Johnson. Those are the top two wide receivers left on the board. Then Will McDonald, the best edge rusher, in my opinion, that was left at pick 25. With pick 25 in the first round, Marshall Green selected... Zay Flowers, wide receiver at a Boston College. I went back and forth between Emmanuel Forbes and Zay Flowers. I tried to think about it like this. What's the Giants' bigger need, and what's the Giants' bigger need long-term? And I believe wide receiver is a bigger need for the Giants long-term compared to corner because you got Aaron Robinson, you got Cordell Flott, and, and you got Adore Jackson. You don't have a number one wide receiver, and I think Zay Flowers could be that, and he definitely was that for Boston College throughout his college football career. I mean, in 2022, the kid had 78 receptions for 1,077 yards, 14 yards per catch, and 12 touchdowns. He was great in the previous three years as well, had over 100 catches in his sophomore and junior year combined, and 14 touchdowns in those seasons. I like Zay Flowers because he could play on the outside. He could play on the slot. He could do everything on the football team, on the football field that you want in a wide receiver. I compare his play style to Antonio Brown. That's the type of wide receiver that I think he is. I think he's a little undersized, but he makes up for it with the physical nature of play. I think he's going to walk in and be your wide receiver one. I know some people may look at him and say he's small. He's a slot receiver. He's not a slot receiver. He plays on the outside. He is going to be very, very good in the National Football League. But I want to ask this question. Jordan Addison was obviously not on the board in my mock draft that I did today. But I want to hear from you guys right now. If Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, and Quinton Johnston were all on the board at pick 25, who would you pick? And I want to reiterate this. These were picks that not just I would make. I kind of went through this as if I was Joe Shane. I tried to think like Joe Shane, and I made the picks like I was Joe Shane. So I want to ask this. If all three receivers on the board, who would you pick? Sound off in the comment section. I do want to let you guys know we will be live for parts of all three days of the NFL draft. So subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. I can't wait for the NFL draft. I can't wait to see what Joe Shane does when he's on the clock. So subscribe and turn your notifications on so you can join us every single day this week. With the 57th pick in round two, I selected Luke Weipler, the center from Ohio State. Tipman, he was off the board. John Michael Schmitz was off the board. So I went with the best next center, and that is Luke Weipler. When you look at what he did for the Ohio State Buckeyes this past season, he played in 827 snaps, allowed just one sack and just seven QB hurries, but he did not allow a single QB hit. 
I think he's good in the pass game. I think he's good in the run game, but he definitely has to work on his technique a little bit. I think he'd be a little bit stronger at the point of attack. Sometimes I think he's a little bit on his butt a little bit too much. Sometimes gets knocked down, but he would be a plug-and-play player for the New York Giants, and I believe he would be the starter come day one. The Giants' biggest need in this draft is center, and at pick 57 in round two, the best one on the board was Luke Weipler. So with the first two picks, you fill a need at receiver, and you fill a need at center. I'm a fan of Luke Weipler. I'm also a fan of Chat Sports, and especially their coverage of the NFL Draft. And we're going to be live starting Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Then we'll be live Friday, then we'll be live Saturday. We're going to be live on our main Chat Sports channels for all three rounds of the NFL Draft. Subscribe and join us, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. So with receiver filled and center filled, the cornerback position is what you needed next. And I love Corey Trice out of Purdue. Six foot three, four, four, 40, over 200 pounds. Corey Trice is a great pick for the Giants in round three. When you look at the stats on paper, he had a great season for Purdue. Allowed a completion percentage of just 48%. He is a press man coverage corner. And with the Giants, in my opinion, having one of the best DB coaches in the National Football League, you get the size, you get the speed that Corey Trice possesses, you need to just teach him how to play football. And I believe if he's taught up and coached up by Wink Martindale and Jerome Henderson, this team and this player will reach the apex that they are supposed to reach. Only allowed one touchdown this past year, 220 yards, had 10 pass breakups, two interceptions. I would love if Corey Trice was on the board at 89 like he was in my mock draft. With receiver, corner, and center field, the next biggest need for me is edge rusher. And I went with K.J. Henry at a Clemson round four, pick 128. When you look at what he did in 2022, the numbers don't jump off the screen. 51 tackles, nine tackles for loss, four sacks, six pass breakups. But the dude was a five-star prospect coming out of high school. And I felt like when Clemson lost their, their defensive coordinator to go take this, the job, Brett Venables, as the uh, Oklahoma Sooners head coach, I feel like a lot of their defensive prospects kind of took a hit in the draft, and I believe Henry is a better player than the numbers suggested. And you needed to add another edge rusher. I believe he could be a plug-and-play player. You don't need him to be a starter right away, but a supplemental piece, a rotational edge rusher behind Kayvon Thibodeau and behind Aziz Ojolari. He could be that third edge rusher on this team. He's six foot two, 250 pounds. He's bendy. He's strong. He's explosive. Got a quick first step. Needs to improve his hands and improve his pass rushing moves. But I am a big fan of Henry. And if he's on the board with the fourth Giants pick, I'd love for him to be wearing New York Giants blue. We'll get to the rest of the picks in the mock draft coming up here in a second. But first, I got to tell you guys about our awesome sponsor of today's show, and that is Z Biotics. Let's face it. After y'all hit me with all these super chats, especially on game days and some of these crazy live shows, the next day is a little bit rough, and that was until I found Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Drink Z-Biotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and then get a good night's sleep to feel your best the next day. Give Z-Biotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash chatsports to get 15% off your first order when you use code chat sports at checkout z biotics is back with a hundred percent money back guarantee so if you're unsatisfied for any reason they will refund your money no questions asked remember to head to zbiotics.com slash chat sports and use the code chat sports at checkout for 15 percent off thank you z biotics for sponsoring today's video that link is clickable down in the comments, description, and live chat of today's show. Comes in a small bottle, and the case that it comes in is slim and sleek. It could easily fit in your travel bag. Maybe you're going to a bachelor party or, or whatever you do. Zbiotics, you're going to love it. Check them out, zbiotics.com slash chat sports. Maybe you know a pick that a lot of people know of, but I believe the value here was great. 
Round five, pick 160. I selected Deuce Vaughn, the running back out of Kansas State. And what a career he had down in Kansas. 651 carries, 3,604 yards, 116 receptions. Deuce Vaughn is a very special player. And I believe in this offense with Mike Kafka, he is going to benefit. Why with these stats did he fall until the fifth round? It's because he's five foot five, 176 pounds. But size has never been a problem for Deuce Vaughn. He has been good everywhere he goes. He's not an every down back. He's not going to get 20 carries per game, but he's someone that I think could play on the field at the same time as Saquon Barkley. I think the Giants need another pass catching running back. I like Mac Breida, but I don't think he possesses the skills that Deuce Vaughn does. Imagine Boston Scott, but better. And wearing a New York Giants jersey, that's who Deuce Vaughn is. He's an electric playmaker. He has a chance every time he touches the football to go to the house. And that's what the Giants need. More players that are explosive and can make this team better in a better scoring offense. Deuce Vaughn, he checks that box. The fifth round, I went with Gerard Clark, the interior defensive lineman from Coastal Carolina. I think the Giants needed to beef up their interior line a little bit, and that is what Gerard Clark does. Big body, over 300 pounds. I think he's falling a little bit in this draft because he's had some previous injuries back in 2020. He had a back injury, but he played two good seasons after that. And look, last year he was good. 10 tackles for loss, 40 tackles, four sacks. I think he's a good run stopper. He can shed some blocks and get after the passer a little bit. But I just think this is a good value pick. I think with him on the board at pick 172, you'd be happy to have him. And anytime you could beef up that interior defensive line and get better in the trenches, you're going to be a better football team. I like this pick a lot. The safety out of Oklahoma State, Jason Taylor the second in round six, pick 209. Six foot, 215 pounds. Can play a little bit of strong safety. Can play a little bit of free safety. He also slid into the slot a little bit for the o o Oklahoma State Cowboys last year. Good football player. 99 tackles, six interceptions last year, and seven pass breakups. I'm a fan. I think he'd fit. I think the Giants, they could use another safety. I know you got Dane Belden and Bobby McCain, but look. It's so round six pick. You're taking a flyer on a guy. You're hoping he could be a player. I think he's definitely going to play on special teams right away in his NFL career. I love the pick. I went with an upside wide receiver in round seven. And it is Grant DuBose. I believe that is how you say it. Out of Charlotte. He is a six foot three, 200 pound receiver who had a great career at Charlotte. This past year, 64 receptions, 792 yards, nine touchdowns, a long reception of 52 yards. He's going to have to fight to make this roster, no doubt about it. That's what all these seven round picks will be. But at six foot three, 200, and the speed he kind of possesses, I think he might be a little sneaky under the radar pick that with the right coaching and with the chance, he might be able to be a contributor down the line for Big Blue. This was a fun pick for me. I selected Jake Witt, the offensive tackle. And this, he has a very, very interesting story. He's six foot seven and one eighth inch, 302 pounds with 33 and a half inch arms. He's a small school sleeper. Listen to the story. He began his career as a basketball player at Michigan Tech and then didn't play in sports in 2019 at Northern Michigan, plus missed the 2020 season due to COVID and was a tight end for much of 2021, but injuries forced him into right tackle. And in that 2021 season, when he had to play one p game, at tackle, he locked down one of the best pass rushers in the college in college football at the D2 level. 23 years old. He's a big project with upside. Might be two years away, if not three or four. He's a draft stash on practice squad and check in later. 11 starts at left tackle, two at right tackle. Giants need maybe another backup tackle. This is someone that I think could definitely maybe be a really good player down the road. Very athletic. This last pick I thought was a steal. And uh, Jonah Tave is, I believe, how you say his name. He's small. No doubt about it. They got him at the Combine and, and his pro day at less than six foot and 290 pounds. But damn, is he a good football player. Very short arms, small, but 10 and a half sacks 
last year, and I think the year before that, he had double-digit sacks as well. This is just one of those fun picks that one day, maybe he comes in and makes a big play for the New York Giants. I think with Wing Martindale as a defensive coordinator, he will find a way to get him on the football field. Jonah Tave. I hope he's a New York Giant, six foot, two hundred ninety pounds. That might be being a little generous, but uh, ten and a half sacks, almost twenty, I, over twenty sacks in the last two seasons. Um, I'd be pumped too as a Giant. We'll go through all ten picks again real quick, and then I'll ask you to grade my draft. So I went with Zay Flowers. Uh, the top receivers were not on the board. I decided between Flowers and Forbes. I went with the receiver. Then the top two centers were off the board. So I went with Luke Weipler at pick fifty-seven. I really love Corey Trice. Long, lanky, strong, fast corner out of Purdue, six foot three at pick 89. Then it went with KJ Henry, an edge rusher out of Clemson in round four. Then I went with Deuce Vaughn, the young, uh, the, the fun, short, electric running back. I love for him to be a New York Giant. He is a lot of fun. Plays with a heart, biggest heart in this draft. Then we went with Gerard Clark, the interior defensive lineman out of Coastal Carolina. I think he's better than being a fifth-round player, but the injuries back in 2020 scare you a little bit. He'd be a really good value pick. I like Jason Taylor out of Oklahoma State, the safety. Then Grant DeBose, the tall, lanky, six foot three wide receiver out of Charlotte. Then Jake Witt, the project tackle. And then Jonah Tave, the interior defensive lineman out of San Diego State. When I did this draft, I realized, and it really set in, the Giants have a lot of day three picks. I didn't do any trades, so I would not be shocked if the Giants trade up with some of those second and third and fourth round picks if they use some of those day three picks. But I didn't want to do that today. But I want to ask this question. Grade my mock draft. My mom already told me it was an A, so none of you guys are going to be able to hurt my feelings. So be honest with me in the comment section. Yell at me down there. It's not a mock draft until they give you an F. So somebody, at least give me an F in the comment section, but grade my mock draft. I would give this, I'd give it a B to a B plus. I'd give it a B to a B plus. Uh, I thought the board kind of shaked out bad for the Giants, but if you could say Flowers, that's a damn good pick. That's a damn good pick. I emphasize need and trench work. For the Giants. I would have liked to get another interior offensive lineman, but I didn't really like any of the ones. That's why I went with Wit, the tackle. But uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Draft two days away. We'll be live for round one for a little bit. We we'll live for round two for a little bit. We'll be live for round three for a little bit. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and uh, let's go big blues. Let's go big blue. See you later.